Hey, Donovan Keith here, and in this video I'm going to give an introduction to the basic uh, manipulation tools in Cinema 4D, move, scale, rotate, uh, as well as modeling with primitive objects. Um, I'm not quite sure what we're going to build, so let's find out. Okay, so first things first, go ahead and add a cube to your scene. Uh, if you've ever studied with me, if you're studying with me now, you will be sick of hearing this phrase. It's basically all I say. Um, and it's because you can use a cube to make any number of things. Um, you can adjust the sizes on it by grabbing these little yellow dots. Um, if you're unable to manipulate it in the way that I am right now, make sure that you've got the object selected. Make sure that you are in model mode right here and make sure that you've got the move tool selected. Um, and if you're not seeing these in the position where I'm seeing them, make sure you're in your standard layout. And I'm in Cinema 4D 2023. So if you're in an earlier version, there's a chance you've got a very different layout from the one that I'm working in. Or if you've got a later version, I don't know, you're in the future, you tell me. So um, I've got my cube. I can adjust what's called the uh, the sizes here, the size X, Y, Z. I can adjust the fillet, it's called, uh, which allows me to round this object, a sort of uh, secret trick to make things look better when you uh, add reflective materials to them. Just add a little bit of this fillet or rounding to the edges to pick up those nice, beautiful highlights. Okay, so that was a cube. Now um, let's take our cube and make a stack of boxes. Now. Um, there, I'm going to actually show you a, a non-standard tool for doing this, um, and it's pretty cool. So I'm going to add a cube, it adds it to my scene, and I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to grab what's called the Place Tool. And the Place Tool is a really fun tool for quickly laying out objects in your scene. This is not a precision tool, but it's really great for just getting things on top of other things. So if you just click and drag with this tool, it finds the ground plane, and it allows you to place your object on that surface. In addition, as I'm clicking and dragging, you see that these two uh, sort of options come up here on top. There's a sort of a circle, which I can click and drag to rotate. And there's also this scale handle, which allows me to scale. So I can come in here now, and if I want, I can duplicate this cube. I can do that by going to Edit Copy, Edit Paste. I could do that by going and holding down my command key and dragging in a new copy, or I can use that same command drag technique, I'm going to hit undo, by control dragging in here to drag a copy of my cube onto my cube, which I can then scale down and rotate, drag in another one, scale down, rotate, and we've very quickly created a stack of elements, and this is uh, this would be actually pretty difficult to do with the standard move tool. So I just want you to know that this really fun tool called the, the place tool exists. And uh, if uh, you want to go really wacky, there's this dynamic place tool down here. This is just silly fun. Um, it's not super uh, useful for what we're, we're doing, but it allows you to sort of take objects and bring them together. If you hold down shift and drag, they, anyway, I'm, I'm a bit distracted. We're going to actually now just use the standard regular move tools in a new scene. So let's go ahead and uh, let's build a little chair, a chair. Okay. So I'm going to grab a box, so right our cube here, bring it in. And um, I don't care so much about getting my dimension super perfect right now. I'm just going to try and sketch this out. So I'm going to grab that top yellow dot and I'm making the seat of a, you know, a rectangular chair. Get something like this. What did I say about fillet? Make sure you've got some. Okay, so we're going to add in a little bit of that rounding. And I'm going to double click and name this seat, right? So I care about the names of my objects. Next, I'm going to control or command drag out a copy of this. And now let's change the sizes here. I'm going to make the size X smaller. You can sort of see it going this way. If you can't quite make out what's happening, it's a good idea to go into your four-way view so you can see it in all of your viewports. And if you hold down Alt or Option and press H, uh, it will, excuse me, not Alt, but rather Option and press H or Alt on PC, it will frame up all of your views. And I'm just going to try and make this um, sort of square in my top view. And again, uh, in a perfect world, this would be perfect, but we are not perfect people. Um, I'm now going to make this taller. I'm, this is the leg of my chair, and I'm going to dolly out so I can see what is going on here. And now I'm just going to line it up in my four-way viewport. And this is a really excellent technique. If you get something lined up in two of these um, orthographic views, right, these sort of top-down flat views, then 
your element will be really nicely positioned. Okay, so I've been moving this thing around, right? So I've got my seat selected, I've got my move tool selected, I've got my model mode selected, and I'm clicking and dragging not on any of these handles, surprisingly, and definitely, definitely not in the center of the object. It's a little counterintuitive, but you're just clicking and dragging not on the object, and anything that's selected is gonna come along for the ride. You can, if you want, use these handles to restrict your movement. So by clicking and dragging on one of these, it moves it in just a single plane or a single um, axis. If you click on one of these sort of triangular ones and drag, it will move in a single plane. And that's also what's just gonna be happening in with any of these orthographic views, right? You're sort of safe there. Um, these manipulators are really helpful though in uh, these 3D views. Now I'm gonna duplicate this leg again. And if I'm being really good, this is my front left leg. And I'm going to hold down my command key or my control key and drag out a copy in the back, right? And this is now my rear left leg. And if I want, I can do that control drag out again, or I can multiple select here, selecting these two legs, hold down my command key or control key and drag them over. And you can see this little grid here. I can kind of use that as a reference. It looks like it's about two grid points over. And I see that things are maybe not the most symmetrical here, but eh, that's fine. So this is now, this is my uh, front right leg. And this is my uh, rear right leg. And I've got my seat. Rearranging that, and then I'm just gonna start in the front, left, right, front, uh, left, front, right, rear, left, rear, right. And uh, you just kinda wanna come up with a predictable pattern for how you're gonna be laying out your objects. So we've done this. Um, now let's go ahead and duplicate our two rear legs, which, hey, we label them. I can just shift select them. And I'm gonna hold down my command key or my control key and drag this up now for the back, and uh, I'm off to a pretty good start. Now there's, um, you know, I need a back to my seat, so I'm just gonna manipulate this a little bit. Um, I'm gonna take this seat here, and I'm gonna duplicate it. Whoa, Command-Shift-Z to undo your, oh, Command-Shift-Z to undo your viewport there, and I'm gonna bring the thickness of this in, and maybe bring this up to form the back. And I feel like we are creating a profoundly uncomfortable chair. Um, so the last step here, we've got this element, we've got all these. I'm gonna bring them up together after I rename this, uh, chair back. I'm gonna bring them up so they sit on the floor. So I'm just gonna hit Command A, and I'm gonna drag them up so that the base here is sitting on the floor. If you want, you could use that place tool, um, but I'm gonna just sort of keep it nice and exact like this. And um, now if we wanna get really fancy, we can set up an object hierarchy so that as you grab one part, the others come along for the ride. And I think that the seat here should be my root. It's sort of the most, uh, it's the largest, most substantial thing. Then I'm gonna make uh, children of it. I'm gonna take my uh, my legs here and make it a child of the seat. And I might take my backs here and make them a child of the seat as well. Uh, or if I wanna move the back, maybe I'll grab this to manipulate both. So maybe I'll drag that in, drag my two legs inside of that, and make sure that this is all labeled appropriately. So this is um, back, so this is my what, my, uh, left back support. This is my right back support. And I'm actually fairly convinced I got my left and my right backward based on you know the a, a character who's sitting in this, their perspective. Okay, so we've got this. The last thing I wanna do is I'm gonna add a figure object to my scene, and I'm gonna use that as a, a sizing reference. So you can see that we have made a gigantic, a gigantic seat. So I can grab my seat, and I can grab that place tool again, and I'm gonna click and drag downward on that scale to get it to scale from the floor. If I had taken my scale tool here, 
and clicked and dragged to scale, you'd see that it's sort of drag, it's scaling from the center of this topmost object from this axis. So the place tools, a nice technique for just quickly scaling something down until it feels right. And I'm going to try and set this a little bit below knee height, right? So that they can sit down with, uh, with ease, tap my H key maybe to frame it up. And maybe it's a bit short, you know, it's probably an awkwardly proportioned chair. And I can delete my figure. And now I've got um, a nice, a nice little chair. So I'm going to save this um, to my project files. Let's call this, um, this is week one primitive modeling. Let's call this uh, chair from primitives V001. And I'm using V001 here so that at any time I can go file, save incremental, and it's just going to up my file name there. Okay, so that's the basics of modeling with just sort of doing positioning, right? So it's it's nothing too crazy. We're resizing things and we're just trying to keep everything nice and neatly lined up by using those access tools. So uh, let's try something a little bit more ambitious, um, or at, le at least let's play around to them with some new shapes. So I can bring in any number of these primitives here. And the primitives that I want to play with um, let's see the, the cylinder, right? So let, we could maybe even make another chair. Uh, this time let's make it a little bit more fancy. Um, same basic structure, but this time let's use some cylinders. So I'm going to add a cylinder here. It's the first element I've seen. And this is going to become my seat. And let's take this cylinder and we can see that we probably need some more divisions in here, right? It's a little bit uh, divided. Uh, I'm going to add in some rotation segments to just make it so that at the resolution I plan on rendering it, I'm not seeing anything there. And then I also want to add a little bit of fillet. So I'm going to come in here, adjust the radius of my uh, fillet here. If I hold down the Alt or excuse me, the Option key and click and drag, I can. Uh, move this in smaller increments. And now I've got my first cylinder. So now I'm going to duplicate this down. And uh, my apologies if there's any background noise, but um, I do not live alone. Okay, so uh, we've got this uh, cylinder here. I'm going to make it a little bit narrower. So I'm going to go into my object and I'm going to adjust my radius here to make it thinner. And now I feel like my segments are probably overkill. 12 is probably fine. And I want to make it taller, right? Because we're using this to make our chair legs. Maybe increase the radius a little bit. Maybe reduce the height. Right, this would probably be like bent aluminum or bent steel, but yeah, we don't necessarily have the Full ability to do that. So now I've got this element, but I, I want it to be angled a little bit. So I'm going to take this rotate tool and the rotate tool allows you to rotate your elements by dragging on these handles, right? For more controlled rotations. This one will do the same. This one will do the same. Um, and if you just click and drag in space, you get this sort of like free orbit. I'm, I'm hitting undo after all of these operations. And if you click and drag outside of it, it's sort of like a steering wheel. So whichever one of these you use is sort of up to you, but it's going to depend on your needs. The other thing I can do is go into my coordinates manager or my coordinates tab for my cylinder here, and I can adjust the exact rotations, the exact sizes, and I'm just going to maybe rotate it out this way, maybe around this sort of steering wheel way, so it's sort of angled. And I'm just going to place it like so, and maybe make another and rotate this one sort of opposite. I can now take these two cylinders. I'm going to duplicate them, rotate them the other way. If you hold down this shift key, I believe it is, as you're rotating, it's going to quantize with any luck. And so now when I move this, I can sort of make it a little bit parallel. And we get something like this. 
So this is maybe more of a stool. And if I want, I can grab these and adjust the radius, make it a little bit thicker. And maybe, maybe I want to create some pads for this, right? So I'm going to take one of these cylinders, bring it down here, and I'm going to reset its transforms, right? So it's all zero, zero, zero. There's a few ways you can do that. You can click on the coordinates here. You can right click on the parameters to reset. You can right click on positioning to reset as well. And I can reduce the height here, get it nice and small. And I'm just going to use this to build a little pad for this, maybe increase the radius a bit. And this is something that they'll never tell you, except they will. Um, I'm telling you now, uh, you don't have to model everything perfectly, right? For the most part, uh, no one's going to be paying that much attention to what you are making. And if you increase the radius a little bit, right, you can sort of hide this inside of the foot. Um, but what they might get upset about is the number of polygons you have here. You don't want too many. And this is so far down here, we might even be able to get away. Eh, we might need like, let's, let's stay at 12 segments. Right, so I've got that one there. So yes, if in a perfect world, I'd sort of model these all one together, and that would be good. But I'm just going to come in, and I'm control dragging out these manual copies. And we've got, you know, kind of a stool, I guess. Um, and again, now here's a uh, stool, we can just call that um, leg, 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 uh, pad, 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 pad. And I kind of want to make sure I'm getting the pad and the right leg. That leg, that pad, pad leg. And I'm going to put all of these inside of my stool and adjust these like so. And if I want, I can grab my stool, grab that place tool, and place it right here. Now, again, for sizing reference, I'm going to bring in my figure object, grab my stool, and I'm just going to bring down the size here until it looks like something you'd sit on. And I guess it's going to be like a little little baby kind of footstool um, like you might find in like a preschool classroom. And get rid of this here. So now we've got our stool. And if I go to just garage shading, I can't see that anymore. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to save this. Um, stool from primitives, the O1. And the cool thing here is I can now take my chair and I can bring it again here to the same scene with my stool. And we see that they actually do kind of feel like roughly the, the correct size. I, I'm, I feel like this chair probably actually needs some work in terms of the size of the seat and a few other things. It's a little, little bit too sturdy. It's a very rough hewn chair. Um, but now we could go ahead and try and model something else. So uh, these are the sort of the basic principles of these tools. You add an element, you take the move tool, you click and drag in space to move it anywhere. You click and drag on a handle to move in a specific direction. You click and drag on these sort of triangles if you want to be a little bit more specific. And if you really, really care about exactness, you can go to your coordinates tab move something into roughly the right spot, roughly the right spot, and then you'll see, oh, I'm pretty close to a round number. I bet that round number will get me exactly where I need to be, and you'd be correct. Uh, I'm also always reinforcing just a little bit of fillet, just a little bit will, will help to sell the any highlights on your objects. Um, if this is gold or chrome or something, it's going to look so much better. Um, that's, that's generally how you work with primitives. Uh, let me show off a few of the, the more fun ones. 
So um, that's the cube, that's the cylinder. The cylinder has a nice slice property, so you can adjust the start and the end. You can do pie charts, you can do a slice of pie. You can do like, uh, if you were to go to your object and adjust the orientation, that's the way it's facing. You can get sort of like a little, I think this is like some kind of like barbecue, right? This looks like some kind of that. I can duplicate this, change the orientation here to minus Z, and then I can rotate this. And I just kinda wanna rotate it from over here. And now I've got, yeah, the start of a pit barbecue. Um, I guess I could add in, yeah, those cylinders, right? And rotate those just a little bit and Oh, also there's some keyboard shortcuts, uh, W or, or excuse me, E-R-T, um, E-R-T, it matches the coordinates of these sort of in space there. Drag this over, drag over another, select these both, I'm holding down shift to do that, rotate them by holding on command the opposite direction, and then E to translate, and now we've got our pit barbecue more or less, right? Uh, not safe for public consumption, but we've now got a something. Um, in addition, there is the uh, cylinder disc polygon capsule here. This one's kind of fun. You can adjust the size of it, the height segments, we'll smooth it out. Um, this also has a slicing property. Whoa, whoa. Um, the cone. Uh, the cone is more than a cone. A cone also, on the object tab here, has a top radius. So you can actually sort of expand it. You can go to your caps here and add in a radius or a fillet. And we can sort of turn it into like a gumdrop. Um, if you reach the edge of your slider, you can come over here to your slider input and just keep on dragging. And we can sort of gumdrop the bottom out as well. And we get something like this. You might need to add some more segments, right? And we've got sort of a little gumdrop. Uh, the figure is a classic. Uh, to access the elements of your figure, you need to press this button right here, which will then allow you to come in and rotate each and every last one of these pieces. Um, last but not least, well, I'm actually pretty far from that. I just want to end this video because I know I'm dragging on. Um, there's a landscape object. This one's really cool. It allows you to create sort of like mountainous regions. If you turn off borders at sea level, you get this like really kind of nifty looking thing. Um, if you adjust the scale of your noise, right, of this sort of uh, turbulence, you can get something that looks a little bit smoother. This sort of looks like an ocean wave, right? Um, the scale, your rough furrows, your fine furrows. There's a lot to play with. Um, you can increase your segments just to increase sort of the visual sharpness of these, but don't get too high. Um, you might live to see your computer freeze. Um, let's see, there is the oil tank. I don't know that I ever really use the oil tank, but it does exist. Um, there is a tube object. This one's pretty nice. The, t the tube allows you to adjust the inner and the outer radius. Um, you can adjust your segments. You can add in some slicing, um, right? So now this is like a, a, a handle for a mug maybe, especially if we add some, what did I say? You add some fillet, uh, makes the coffee go down better. Uh, yeah, sure, let's just make a coffee mug, just, just to prove to ourselves that we can. Um, we can, it's gonna be a bit of a hack. I'm gonna use a tube, right? To make the sort of interior part of my mug. Maybe make it a bit bigger here. I'm gonna definitely increase my uh, rotation segments. And then I'm going to add in that fillet to round it out a little bit. And um, so long as no one in it ever sees the bottom of our mug, right? This is a pretty convincing mug. Uh, we could also, if we, we are concerned about the bottom, we could add in a cylinder, right? To fill out the bottom, at least the interior part of it, right? And a lot of mugs have sort of a lip. So we might be able to get away with this right here. Yeah, it looks kind of okay. And then uh, this one right here, I've got my um, the start of a handle. But if I rotate it, do boo, boo, you can sort of click around until you get one that feels about right. 
I can adjust my radii. And I want a smaller radius. I'm trying to sort of set that here, smaller radius. Um, inner radius is, gives it a bit of thickness. And then the slicing, you can sort of over and under slice it to get a little bit of roundness. And then, um, you know, it's sort of clipping in here. So maybe I want to tweak that to avoid that. And I want to come in here and add in that, that fillet, a little bit of softness there. This is kind of a fun mug. I want this mug. Um, and I can adjust my height. Maybe the fillet needs a, another segment or two. Maybe it's too extreme in the softening. Um, there you are. We've got a little coffee mug. Um, I'm going to make the biggest objects for the, the chief here. Coffee mug. Uh, this is my base. Or no, this is my uh, handle. This is my base. And um, I'm just going to scale this again using that figure objects as a rough size reference and using my um, place tool to sort of scale it down. And I guess I can place it here. Well, it's still gigantic. I'm scaling it down. It feels better. It's a big mug of coffee still. Yeah, that feels about right. Um, and I'll save this as a coffee mug from Primitives V01. Okay, um, and I can copy this into my first scene here. Now I've got a coffee mug. Maybe this isn't uh, a stool. Maybe it is a coffee uh, table. And maybe this chair here, um, maybe I'm going to increase the fillet on the legs. And maybe, yeah, play around with some of these other values. Maybe the, the height of the seats really is a little bit ridiculous. You can sort of play and just keep getting things closer to what you want. This can be like your rough chair, and then you can download a, a better one from the internet or keep modeling a better one. Um, the mug, maybe uh, there's a couple of them. Maybe two people have been drinking coffee together. Um, you could even stack one on top of the other. You could stack this one here, which is an odd uh, choice. But there we are. We've now got um, something that's feeling a little bit more like a, a thing, like a scene. So this is this is how you sort of take these different elements and you bash them together. So, uh, what's left? We've got the platonic. Um, there's different shapes inside of here. Um, the sphere, I didn't show this off, but the sphere has different, uh, where is the sphere? Sphere. The sphere, if you go into display garage shading lines, it has different generation modes. You can make a hemisphere, a tetrahedron, uh, a hexahedron, an octahedron, or an icosahedron or a cosahedron. I don't know how to say it, but it looks kind of like the like Epcot Center, and that's fun. You can adjust your um, number of segments, and uh, you know there's some different poly modeling tools you can do to this, but if you want a nice sort of uh, triangular grid, that's a fun way to do it. You're, oh my goodness. Um, I know that there's a whole part of the internet dedicated to this. Um, so I'm not going to make one of those. I'm going to make, uh, let's call it a bagel. Yeah. Um, and you know what? <laughs> uh, I kind of want to make this a table. Anyway, we're going to put, let's put a, uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to build a plate with a bagel on it. So to build my plate, I'm going to do this sort of cylinder right here, right, to start the, the plate. But that's a little too uniform. So I'm going to use my um, tube. Where did the tube go? There it is. And I'm going to adjust the radius of my tube. I go into my four-way view to play with this. And I'm going to use this tube to just sort of add that thickness that you sometimes see at the lip of a plate, probably to keep the sauce from getting, you know, all, all messy on you. So I'm going to bring this down. And this is not, I don't, I hope this isn't how people model in production, but um, 
it kind of works. So here I'm, I'm going to increase the number of rotation segments until it looks smooth. I'm going to come in here and again add that, that little bit of fillet here to round this out. And maybe I'll add a little fillet here at the base. And it's, you know, it's an odd plate, but it's it's a plate. So I'm going to call this plate. Let's call this rim. Um, I can place it on the ground. Oops. Place it on the ground. Add my figure. And I want to just sort of adjust the sizing on this until it feels about right. Get rid of this. And now let's build that that donut. I they aforementioned donut, um, which I can do with the torus here. And I adjust the ring radius to, to bring it down. Uh, ring the pipe radius. Uh, And I'm going to place this on my plate, scale it down a little bit. And then in my scaling, in my coordinates tab, I am going to set it to a non-uniform scale. So it's a little bit flattened. And we get that. And then I might, I might choose to add a slice to this. As though someone has taken a bit of a bite. This is probably not how you would do this normally. but. And if I sort of cheat it, or I place it, but I'm going to rotate it away. So we're, we're just seeing that it's, you know, sort of monched, but we're not clear on why. Um, maybe we can do like this. Maybe it's, yeah, it's like a bagel with schmear or something. So we can place this here. Maybe I'll make like a little tomato. Hey, I'm going to use the oil tank. Um, I'm going to call this my little tomato slice. Add in, if they'll let me, uh, fill it, which I don't think they will. But I can place this now. And maybe, maybe I'll add another one of these on top here. And Add these as children of this. So this is my bagel. This is tomato. This is another tomato. And I can use my uh, dynamic place to get this to actually sort of like fall, right? If you drag it up and hold down your shift key and click and drag, it will fall. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to move it over here, hold down shift and release. So it's going to fall sort of on the edges here. And I can see on these two pieces, I'm going to take my move tool with this tomato and adjust my um, rotation segments. And yeah, okay. So this is my uh, bagel and tomato. And I'm going to bring this over to my, uh, where is this scene? Oh, you can use your scroll wheel here to uh, place things. And I'm going to place this here. And I'm going to get ri rid of one of these coffee mugs. And this is just sort of like an impromptu process for how you might approach something like this. And, you know, we need a better chair, but if I add in a light and move it around, oops, Command Shift Z to undo, I'm going to supplement with another light. And let's lower the brightness. Right, we're not going to win any awards for these two things. 
In fact, I'm gonna change this for a, a PBR light. It's really sort of an easy way to get something that feels successful. Now, if you're using Redshift, you don't have to worry about this. You know, just your default area light's probably gonna feel pretty good. Um, I'm gonna move it back and adjust our exposure. And I guess to make it feel more like a room, I'm gonna add in, this, this is really sort of like morphed from a video about just using uh, the move and rotate and so forth tools to a video about how you can kind of bash together a scene and uh, me saying fill it about a thousand times. Uh, I really hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. I think I am, but I never know. So I've got this. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more molding, right? So I'm gonna take this duplicate it down. So now we've got just sort of like a base molding, like a sort of a little lip down here that I'm gonna intersect with this. And then, right, so this is my uh, molding, I don't know how to spell that, molding. Um, I feel like that just means it's rotting. Uh, base boards and Maybe I can move this back this away. I'm gonna add in a plane for the ground, right? Let's add in another plane and just change the orientation to minus Z, let's say. Um, I can use my place tool to get it to abut the other one sort of perfectly. Um, it gets a little bit messy here because we've got some other objects, but we, that at least is gonna get us the depth that we need. Take our move tool again. Find that axis, move it over. Um, and these, maybe I need to make them bigger. And um, I'm going to take my chair, and I'm using the placement tool again, right? I'm gonna slightly rotate this this way. Maybe like this, maybe it'll, no, the person should be bagel facing. That's how you should always strive to be in life. Um, place this this way and the table I'm also going to rotate ever so slightly uh, my thought being that I want this to look not too amazingly planned and I really don't love this chair so maybe I'm just going to like try and hide it <laughs> um Plate coffee, so plate coffee mugs dual. Now I can reposition all of these. Yeah, this is looking better. Now, granted, you kind of want these to be background objects because they're not that that detailed. Um, let's get that handle in there. And um, I'm just gonna show you the very basics of material. So you can double click to create a material. You can apply it to an object, and then you can change the color. So maybe it's a, a dark gray mug. Um, our bagel is gonna be bagely in color. Maybe a little bit more yellow. Maybe it's an egg bagel. Uh, my plate, uh, maybe they they like their earthenware to, to sort of match. Um, this tomato then, let's skew this a lot redder. And we can put this on there for our tomato slices. Dragging it onto an individual thing here. Looks like it landed on the wrong one, so I'm just gonna put it right on my tomato. Um, I don't like this darker color here. I'm gonna make this a lighter. Ooh, we could do two tone. We can do two tone. So that's the plate, that's the rim. I'm gonna swap these. And. Right now it's a little bit lighter. Um, and then maybe we wanna do wood. 
color. Or maybe it's a fun yellow plastic stool. Yeah, it's a fun yellow plastic stool. Um, and then we can just probably do like all white for the backdrop here. And the floor. Um, right. Floor, I'm just gonna, I don't know. <laughs> Is it carpeted? Who are these people? Where do they live? What's their deal even? Um, I'm gonna put this on the carpet. Who doesn't love a poop green, excuse me, a sort of a, an olive green uh, thing here? All right, so uh, clearly you should do a little bit more planning and thinking, but this is uh, this is a fun sort of first jaunt into um, adding some elements to a scene. If we were to use um, Redshift, for example, and some photorealistic materials, we'd get a much better result. But I don't know. This is uh, just a quick experiment in, in what you can do with primitives, just sort of bashing a scene together. Okay, thank you very much.